Dr. Blizzard single-handedly made the biggest contribution with the initial treatment of patients with growth hormone. He nurtured and mentored generations of pediatric endocrinologists, both in the United States as leaders in academic medicine, but internationally. Dr. Blizzard was published in the best journals, the absolute cutting edge of pediatric endocrinology. He did a great service to many people. His commitment to children's health was profound. I first met him when I was applying for a internship at the Johns Hopkins Hospital, fall of 1969. We spent the first 25 minutes talking just about growth hormone. I felt right at ease. I first met Bob as he asked me to call him in 1970 at the Johns Hopkins Medical Institutions when he offered me a fellowship in pediatric endocrinology. He was a no-nonsense person but had a priority for a pediatric endocrinology was a young assistant professor of pediatrics when he came to the University of Virginia to be the chair in 1974. He was a force of rationality from Johns Hopkins University and he was going to shape us all up. At the very beginning, you don't work with Dr. Blizzard, you work for him, which I did. If we went to him with an idea, as long as we could justify what we were doing, he would support us. I was considered it a privilege to work with him because of his zeal to be up to date on medical care in terms of both diagnosis and treatment. Working with Bob Lizard was, for me, always a struggle. We could argue about most anything. We struggled philosophically over budgets and who had control, fundraising. We struggled um, on the tennis court. We learned to uh, live with each other professionally and we over time, became good friends, very good friends. What would they say about Dr. Blizzard, the doctor? He was well known as a clinician, but if you go through his investigative career, whether it was adrenal hyperplasia, autoimmune disease, whether of course it was growth hormone that he was probably best known for, or differences in sexual development, he wrote papers on all of those in the best of journals, New England Journal, Pediatrics, the Journal of Clinical Investigation. You know, Bob continues to be an example for me to share with others the hope for a better well-being of patients. How did Dr. Blizzard impact the lives of children with growth hormone deficiency? There's a very easy answer to that, and that is he made them taller. He would talk to the patient first, address their questions, then discuss with the parents in front of the patient so the patient could hear what was going on. And so he was one of the very few who really looked into the entire family. He kept contact with patients over the years, particularly one individual. I met Dr. Blizzard in 1954. I was eight years old. I thought he was a good doctor. He was very inquisitive. In high school, I was four feet tall, and that was kind of the elephant in the room with everyone, but he removed that elephant. There's so many stories that have been written and yet to be written about this entire area of growth, and he was a major player in all those stories. We have over 400 years service. We all came as very young docs, and we all stayed because of him. He took care of us. He was our mentor. He was our teacher. I still go by Mrs. Robert Blizzard rather than Pamela Blizzard. He was intelligent, inquisitive, adventurous. He possessed a good sense of humor. He was also a romantic. He loved being surrounded by the grandchildren and he was very instrumental in their beliefs on social justice. He was an excellent teacher, both in personal life and in his professional life. He was an optimist. He had a saying that for every negative force, there is a positive force. And that he meant that for any negative things that happened to us in our life, there was a positive that counteracted that. And he lived by that every day. I feel he contributed extensively to the art of medicine as well as the science of medicine. He paved the way for many people to follow in his footsteps. He was a renaissance man. I guess there's so much that I could talk about, 
that that's why I held up at the moment. I would like to see this audience be more interested in utilizing the services of the Human Growth Foundation in dealing with patients with growth disturbances and research. And by you making an annual donation to the, uh, uh, to the society for that purpose. And by all means, refer your patients with any type of growth disturbance to uh, the Human Growth Foundation and, to, and advise the parents about their assets. I'm slumped all over, aren't I? I look like an old man. <laughs> My wife wants me to look like a young man. So. <laughs>